Thank you. Um, so I have five minutes, and I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm going to do uh, three things. I'm going to explain what the Government Performance Lab is and, and how, how we help state and local governments uh, improve their social programs. Uh, and then I'm going to make a couple points about uh, evidence-based policymaking. Um, so, um, can you walk off with this? Uh, so the, um, okay. So the, we, we are a organization of, uh, we have 40 people on our team, uh, five basically in our Cambridge headquarters, and the other 35 are embedded in state and local governments around the country, helping them do projects. And our basic um, uh, working premise is that there are amazing government leaders like Christian uh, in agencies around the country, uh, but they can't always do the reform projects they want to do because they're too busy making sure today's crisis gets solved and that the whole you know, agency doesn't collapse and, and that the trains run on time and everything else. And so what we do is we take people who've recently graduated from master's programs, often uh, master's in public policy programs, the, the person who staffed South Carolina for a couple of years, Erica Brown, had graduated from the Brown University uh, public policy program. Uh, we take people who've recently graduated from master's programs of various sorts, and we uh, embed them uh, full time in government agencies, helping government agencies do reform projects. And we find that basically we're bringing two things to government. One is just capacity, that there is a person now who doesn't have any line responsibilities, who can make sure that, that, a, that a reform project moves forward by one day every day. And then there's a set of technical expertise that, that we bring around writing uh, contracts with good incentives about uh, using data uh, effectively and, and uh, doing cost-benefit analyses and, and financial modeling uh, and, and, and the sort. Our, our initial projects were in this pay for success space that is like the South Carolina project. Um, there are now 14 uh, pay for success projects in the United States uh, where, uh, uh, by, where my definition is the contract has been signed. I think only 12 of them have services uh, begun being delivered. And of those 14, uh, one of our fellows staffed the government side of 10 of them. Um, and of those 10, six have randomized controlled trials being uh, produced out of them. So in addition to the evaluation of NFP uh, from the South Carolina project, we have a New York State project that's evaluating uh, um, job training services for people coming out of state prison. We have a Massachusetts project that's evaluating um, uh, 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 an organization called ROCA, which provides uh, services to, to troubled youth. Uh, we have a homelessness evaluation going on in Denver where the question is, if you take the highest utilizers of the jails, the mental health facilities, the shelters, and you house them, uh, does the government actually save money on net from, from, from doing that? And, and also, do the homeless individuals uh, come out uh, 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 better off? We have a randomized experiment in Connecticut that's, uh, if you take families in the child welfare system where there's a substance abuse uh, problem that's at the core of why the child is being maltreated and you treat the substance abuse problem, does that lead to, to better outcomes for the, for the kids? Um, and uh, we have an experiment going on in Illinois where there are children in the child welfare system who are teenagers and who've gotten involved in the um, adult correction system or you know, been picked up by the correction system. Uh, what happens if you intervene really quickly with wraparound services? Can you get them on the, on, on the right track? So that was our initial work. Um, We've come to um, realize that our model of helping governments tackle social problems can be applied also uh, to not just these add-on pay-for-success projects, but to helping them with their, with their core spending and using data to improve their core spending. And so uh, with support from the Arnold Foundation, uh, we've put five fellows on the ground in Rhode Island helping Governor Raimondo's team um, uh, tackle across six or seven different social service agencies uh, the question of can you use data and evidence to improve uh, the operations of, of, of social ser service programs. And I would say the number one idea that's common across all these projects is it, that you can use data not only to do big randomized control trial long-term impact evaluations, but you can use data in real time on a weekly or a monthly basis to actually improve the outcomes of programs. So it's not, program effectiveness is not a static concept. It's not these programs work and those don't, and let's figure out which is which and we'll fund more of those and, and cut those. Any program can be made more effective, uh, or at least most of them can. And the question is how to, how to use data to, to, to do that. And so the, in, in many cases, the social services that are being delivered, uh, in almost all cases, are being delivered by organizations outside the government. And so there's a contractual relationship between the government and the social service providers. And what we help governments do is set up real-time 
monitoring of those contracts and collaborative interactions, often on a monthly basis, between the service delivery folks and the agency folks, where they look at data together and they figure out how to make the program work better. So for example, in Rhode Island, uh, there was a challenge that there's, there's organizations that are supposed to be, um, when, when a, a, a family in the, in the child welfare system uh, has a crisis, uh, they're supposed to uh, start serving the child within a, a specified amount of uh, time. I think it was three days or four days was the cutoff. And we pulled up the data and the average service provider was getting there in eight days. And so through bringing that data uh, to the fore and then having conversations and pulling sample cases, we were able to get that back down to the target uh, um, of, of, of just a few days before, before this family that was in a crisis actually got served. And so we could, I could tell you a lot more examples like that, but it's really about using data to drive real-time improvements in, 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 uh, um, in systems. So I'm, uh, uh, there's a very intimidating looking person at the front of this uh, audience with a big red stop sign who I think we should send next door uh, to see if it'll work there. Um, but because of that, let me just say one other thing, which is we um, are looking for new government partners and we have a um, application process where new applications are due by March uh, 15th. And if uh, anybody's interested in that, either go to our website by just typing Government Performance Lab in, into Google uh, or find me or, or Gloria Gong who can wave right there who uh, uh, develops our new projects for us uh, uh, during the break.